Hussein, 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 Ya Hussein. It's closer to the arrival and the reappearance of the 12th Imam. Rabat say the false claimants to the Mahadaviyat, the pseudo Imams will increase. Every Tom Dick and Harry will come. I'm the Imam, I'm the Imam, I'm the Imam of the time. And tonight, today you see it. There are certain groups amongst the Shiites who have leaders who claim themselves to be the Imam, who claim themselves to be the Imam of the time. What will happen to them? We don't want to understand, we don't want to talk about it. But yes, these are just a few. Rabat say, as the time comes closer to the arrival of the Imam, more pseudo Imams will come. More individuals falsely claiming themselves to be the Mahdi, they would claim themselves. And I will explain that one to you. But problem occurs when there are individuals who claim themselves to be the Mahdi. But the problem is, this is fair enough. They've got personal motives. They know there is a problem in my claim. But still, because they want position, because they want power, because they want money, because they want affluence, because they want fame, because they want some position in the society, they want to make this claim because the best way to make the claim is, is to claim yourself to be the Mahdi because Mahdi is supposed to come. Let's use this criteria and spread ourselves in the community so that the people then use it to give us fame, deference, esteem, respect. But when this comes out, there's another group and I'll come to this. But the problem comes is that individuals don't want but certain other individuals claim that you are the Mahdi. I... One group is, I claim myself to be the Mahdi. Fair enough, because I know. The problem comes in our community, in the Shiite history, is when there were individuals who were good, and people mistake them to be, either mistake them to be the Mahdi, or intentionally, for their own purposes, call them Mahdi. You know the case of, in the time of the seventh Imam. See, this is a very interesting part of history, huh? this particular segment that I'm talking now. It's a very interesting part of history as to how these sects have developed. I have probably delivered 45 lectures only on this. You know this hadith that talks about 73 sects? 71 sects amongst the Jews, 72 sects amongst the Christians, 73 sects upon the Muslims. Amongst these 73 sects, there is one firqa that is called Al-Firqatul Najiyah. There is one group that is going to gain salvation. All the other 72 groups amongst the Islam, amongst the Muslimin are going to go to hell. 45 lectures on this one hadith. Detailing out what happens out. One small part. In the time of the seventh Imam. You, you know what happens. When the seventh Imam passes away. There is a group that rises up. There is a sect that rises up. There is a cult that rises up by the name of Waqifiyya. Waqifiyya comes from the word Waqf. Waqf, not the Waqf that you give as trust. In Arabic, Waqafa means to stop. That's why when you go to Arabic countries. Here you have, when you want to stop, it says stop in red. In the Arabic countries, when you go for writing stop, they say qif. Qif means stop. Those who've been to Arabic countries, Dubai, you'll see this. Qif. Qif means to stop. Waqif means to stop. One who stops. Waqifia is the group that is stopping. Stopping means what? Stopping means stopping at the imamat. Which imam? The seventh imam. When the seventh imam passes away, a group of people who were the wakils of the seventh imam, they had a lot of funds at their disposal. A lot of individuals who had a lot of funds. When the seventh Imam passed away, he had told his vakils, Look, whenever I pass away, all the money of khums that you have got with you, you need to give it to my son Ali ibn Musa. Imam Rada alayhi salam. Says you need to give it to him. These individuals turned rogue. They say, we've got so much money to give it to Ali. Not acceptable. We will do it. We will keep it. But how do you keep it? If Ali ibn Musa is the Imam, everybody say, return the money to him. You're the Imam who had given you the vakalat. He's dead. You need to pass the money back to the next Imam. So what's the best way? He says, stop the lineage of Imamat. So how do we stop? He says, spread the word. The Mahdi that the Holy Prophet had talked about is this Mahdi. Kazim, Imam Musa Kazim has not died. He has been raised and ascended to heaven just as Isa went to heaven. When the time comes and when the Mahdi is supposed to come, it is this Imam who is going to come. So this Imam has not died. Imamat is stopped over here. Imamat has become waqf over here. We have become waqifiyah. We stopped the Imamat. And the entire occult started by the name of waqifiyah who said, Imam Kazim has not died. He has gone up into the heaven. heavens. He is the 
Imam Mahdi that the Holy Prophet has prophesied he is going to come down in the Akhar Zaman to deliver the people and grant salvation because now he is not dead and because he is raised to the skies because he is the last Imam so now the Imam doesn't go to Imam Rada if the Imam doesn't go to Imam Rada we don't need to give the money to him see how personal motives and agendas work we need to understand these are these are those pitfalls that have taken place remember what ali said to hassan hassan understand from my experiences don't try to reinvent the wheel i'm giving you all my experiences on a platter take heed from my experiences so that you don't fall into the trap that i've seen people falling into you don't fall into those manholes that i've seen people falling into listen to what i'm telling you so that you start off afresh without reinventing the wheel we've been told by the sixth imam understand allahumma ajil waliyak al faraj is good ajal allah ta'ala faraj al sharif is good but only good if you're prepared for what is going to happen if you are not prepared to what is going to happen and you could be into the line of not my way but the highway then it is in your interest not to call imam zamana because if he comes and you and me find ourselves on the opposite direction that is wawaila for us then we become ashkal ashqiya along with ibn muljim and that is why we've got traditions are huh, that says understand when imam is not coming when you are calling him when the imam is not coming when you are calling him it is a grace of god upon you because you could possibly turn against him and then eventually land up into eternal perdition certain individuals would not even know why they're being called for example muhammad hanafiya muhammad hanafiya was called the mahdi do you know that muhammad hanafiya was the son of ali from a wife other than fatima to zahra salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayha This concept of Mahdaviyat from the time of the Holy Prophet. You think it is only after the time of the 11th Imam that Mahdi comes? Hapana, from the time of the Holy Prophet that Mahdi is hitting. He is saying there is this Mahdi who is going to come and then give us. Because the situations were very clear to everyone. Can you imagine two months after Al-Ghadir? People say we don't remember Al-Ghadir. Means what? 120,000 people in that plains. No water, no tree. You know there was no tree. Huh? There was just one tree over there in Ghadir. No water, no tree, 120,000 people with all the formality that the Holy Prophet did. Ghadir took place for how many days? You know that. Ghadir took place for how many days? You think it was just that he came over there. Yeah, your Rasul Balik took place. And then he says, okay, those who have gone in front, come back. Those who are behind, I'll wait for them. Set up a, 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 a platform of saddles. And he says, Man kuntu mawla Ali and mawla. And khalas. And then they go back home. The whole concept of Ghadir, the whole program took three days. Three days in Ghadir Akhun, they were there. The whole three days in that heat. People were saying, Rivad said, it was so hot, they could not stand. They would keep moving their legs one after the other. It was so hot. Three days, the Holy Prophet says, stand over here. Two months after this incident, people say, we forget. We don't know. Did he, did he say that Ali is Man Kuntam Allah? We don't remember. Muhammad Hanafiya was called Mahdi from the time the Holy Prophet. Muhammad Hanafiya was born after the death of the Holy Prophet. Let me tell you something about this Muhammad Hanafiya. So you know at times because of la ilmi, because of ignorance, people follow a certain imam. There's a problem. Muhammad Hanafiya was a very nice man. Huh? Muhammad Hanafiya was a very pious man. Muhammad Hanafiya was one of the very close confidants of, the, of, the, of Imam Ali alayhi salam. The only thing that you and me are not usually accustomed to hearing about him is because he was overshadowed by two sons. He was overshadowed a moon that was under an eclipse of the sun. Two sons, Hassan and Hussein. Hassan and Hussein, two sons. It's exactly like the case of Marum Ayatollah Khui. When Ayatollah Khui was the marja of the time in Iraq and majority of the Islamic world. You think there were no other ulama, no other mujtahideen in Iraq? But his luminosity and his halo was so intense that everybody was succumbing in front of him. Same thing happened. Muhammad Hanafiya was a, was a moon. But he was under the eclipse of two sons, Hassan and Hussein. And that's why you don't hear. But Muhammad Hanafiya, Ajaba, listen to this and then we move forward. People began to call Muhammad Hanafiya the Mahdi. This concept of Mahdi, pseudo Mahdi. Or people intentionally calling some others Mahdi. Or some people because of lack of knowledge and ignorance calling Mahdi. Started from the time, just immediately after the Prophet. This Muhammad Hanafiya was a man, you'll be amazed huh, to know about it. These are things you and me need to know about it. We say, oh, Muhammad Hanafiya was the son of Ali. And the idea is, okay, other sons of Ali, Hassan and Hussein, fair enough. Others, no. Muhammad Hanafiya. See, the name of the Holy Prophet is what? Muhammad. 
Listen uh, carefully. Name of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. His title Abul Qasim. Correct? That's what you keep hearing in the khutbahs. Muhammad, title Abul Qasim. This combination of name and title is haram on anybody to keep in this world. Rewaad say it is haram. Nobody can keep the name Muhammad Qasim. Muhammad and the laqab is Abul Qasim. It is a shari dictate. It is haram for an individual. Except for one individual. The Holy Prophet says this combination of the name Muhammad and Abu Qasim is only permissible by God for me and for Imam Zamana. Name of Imam Zamana is Muhammad. His kunyat and la his laqab is Abu Qasim. So the only individual after me who's got the permission to keep this name and this title together, this laqab together, this kunya together is myself and Imam Zamana. Except for one more person, Muhammad Hanafiya. He says the only individual that I give permission after Imam Zamana to keep this combination of name Muhammad and the, and the kunya of Abu Qasim is in, in addition to Imam Zamana is Muhammad Hanafiya. Muhammad Hanafiya was not even born when the Prophet had passed away. Before he passed away, he told Ali, there is a boy that is going to come to you from a wife other than my daughter Fatima. When he comes, his name should be Muhammad. You can give him the title Abu Qasim. Other than these two individuals in the history, nobody has got the permission to have these two combination. This is Muhammad Hanafiya. People then, when they look at him, they say he's the Mahdi. He didn't want himself to be called a Mahdi. He was a servant of the family of Hassan Hussain. Even to the time of Sajjad. At the time of Sajjad, he was a Mahdi. People... Political thought process would consider individuals and make them pseudo. They did not want it. Zaid. Zaid was a son. Zaid ibn Ali ibn al Hussein. Zaid is the son of Hussein, of, of Imam Sajjad. And that's why he's called Zaid ibn Ali ibn al Hussein. Imam Sajjad had a son by the name of Zaid. This Zaid, at the time of Bani Umayyah, because after the death of Imam Hussein and Sajjad is the Imam for 35, 37 years, this was the time of Bani Umayyah. In the time of Bani Umayyah, this son of Imam Sajjad, Zaid, grows up. And he seeks to rise up against the, the Bani Umayyah. Now, we don't want to go into detail. Did Imam sanction? Did Imam approve? Did Imam not approve? Did, was he, was he uh, you know, granting an approval to Zaid or not? This is debate. Forget about it. But he did rise up against Bani Umayyah. He did launch a mission. He did launch a campaign. He rebelled against them. Fights took place. He was killed. Khalas. After he is killed, people say he is the Mahdi. After he is killed, people say he is a Mahdi. See, we need to understand these things. The reason I am talking about these things is I want to hit some message home. There are certain problems in our community worldwide. And if we don't understand this, this is the problem that we will face. Look at the problem. The problem was immediately as soon as he dies, a group stands up. A group stands up saying, Zaid died, he is the Mahdi. He is the Mahdi, we will consider him to be the Mahdi. He will come again after his death. So, Baba, why do you consider him to be the Mahdi? He says, because of one tradition of the Holy Prophet. So, what tradition? Now, the Holy Prophet has a tradition. See, there are numerous traditions from the Masumin that have come that highlight and identify the alamat of the 12th Imam. Signs of the 12th Imam. Characteristics of the 12th Imam. Traits of the 12th Imam. There are numerous traditions. One such tradition in which Imam mentions three characteristics of Imam Zamana. The Prophet mentions three characteristics of Imam Zaman. Listen to this tradition and I'll tell you where they go wrong. Which is a danger for us. Now we do the same thing. The tradition says, he says, the alamat of my qaim, the alamat of my, the twelfth Imam is one. Innahu min wuldil Hussain. Wa annahu yakhruju bis saif. Wa annahu ibn sabiyya. In this tradition he mentions three signs. There are numerous traditions. We talk about different, different signs. You can't have all the signs in one. Sometimes there's a certain talk process, there's a certain uh, topic that is there, and then, him, and, then, and then the Prophet says, you know, similar thing is there when the Imam will come, when the Qayyim will come. All the Masum have been talking about Qayyim, from the Holy Prophet till the 11th Imam. Here he's saying, three criteria, three, three alama, three signs of Imam Zamana. One, he is from the Min Wuldil Hussain, from the lineage of Hussain. The second sign is, that he will rise up with the sword, Yakhruju is safe. He will come out with the sword. That means he will launch a military expedition. Third, in Nahu ibn Sabiya, he will be the son of a slave girl. 
That means a slave girl will be married to one of the members of the family of the Ahlul Bayt and he will be born. All of these three things become muntabik and become applicable to Zaid. Zaid was from the lineage of Hussein because he was the son of Imam Sajjad. One. Second, Yakhrujub is Saif. Imam the Holy Prophet has said, one of the signs of the alamat of Imam Zamana, he will rise up with a military campaign. Zaid stood up against the Bani Umayyah. And third, the Imam Zamana would be, in the words of the Holy Prophet, would be the son of a slave girl. This was a slave girl. Ittafakan and coincidentally, the mother of Zaid was also a slave girl. So they pick up one hadith, they say, look, the Holy Prophet says, the Mahdi will be the, from the lineage of Hussain. Zaid is from the lineage. Uh, the Holy Prophet says he will rise up, he will raise up arms in, in a military expedition. Zaid stood up against the Bani Umayyah. And the Holy Prophet says the third sign in this tradition is that the Imam, the Mahdi, would be the daughter, would be the son of a slave girl. His mother, Zaid's mother, is a slave girl. So he is now the Mahdi. This is what we do. What they fail to realize is that this word, this hadith was qualified. This hadith had a qualification. This hadith had a condition, had a caveat in another tradition. That tradition we did not go through their eyes. What was their tradition? The Prophet says, Al min ba'di ashar. After me, the Imams will be twelve. Tis atum min sulbil Hussain. Nine of them will be coming from the loins, from the lineage of Hussain. The ninth of the sons of Hussein will be the Qaim. They didn't see that hadith. They didn't see that he that, that, that the Holy Prophet says after Hussein, the ninth will be the Qaim. They picked up one hadith, saw it becoming applicable to Zaid, and they said, This is now applicable to Zaid. The Prophet has given the alamat, so this Zaid is the Mahdi. We will follow him. It developed, it morphed into a cult by the name of Zaidiyah, which even today you'll find in Yemen. Say